when you are uh, you know making characters when you're writing down what's your process like because there's also something we learned about actors bible uh, yesterday with uh, mr rk and dk of the how they approach uh, actors as such so what's your process uh, when you're sketching uh, characters you meant uh, raj and dk not rk dk sorry, sorry yeah. <laughs> So story first for me, and then characters are very very important to me. And I think character motivations drive my stories. I mean, of course, plot and premise is very very important. And I uh, write each and every character sketch at least with my head or on paper. I need to know each and every person, even if they're there for five minutes in the film. Especially related to darlings, even if they don't have dialogues, or I just know the relationship that that person will have with other characters. Where they come from, who their parents are, where you know how they grew up. Like in Darling's Hamza's character was written like I think three four generations back. Like where he came from, why he's so entitled, uh, has there was was there violence in his family, stuff like that. So I work a lot on psychology and their background, a lot on characters. So everything that they have to be that person who you know how that person will react. At least I should know that so I can uh, help actors, you know, enact that and transfer as much information as possible. Uh, Mayank was asking about the Kolkata film industry and uh, Razdeep was saying about that. Uh, I just uh, mentioned a point. Bengali film industry works and uh, used to wrap up a film within 12 to 13 days. Uh, I guess uh, Razdeep uh, will with me. Uh, even for the commercial movie, I just wanted to know the scenario about the Kannad and the Maharashtrian movie. Is it the same day, 12, 13 days a movie, is it possible? Kannada. Uh, Kannada. 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 Okay. So, um, I mean, it depends on the story and the scale. I was also a part of the uh, CBFC. I was a panel member of previous, my terms ended so I can talk about it. So, um, I have seen films which by big filmmakers done in such a small scale, probably they finished it under 10 days, I don't know. So it all comes, boils down to your, that particular story and the budget that, that, that you have. If you have a budget, if you have a budget that can be, uh, you can shoot only for 8-10 days, then you'll have to end up doing it. But Because that's how filmmaking works. It's all about the budget end of the day, how much you have to shoot. So how important is dubbing for you, so that you can cater to the audience of uh, other languages as well? I'm Aditya from Cinedubs. Thank you. Are you going to give us a phone number also? <laughs> if you need dubbing, this is where you need to call. No, I don't dub. I don't dub. I'm a, I'm a passionate uh, uh, customer of films and I found a problem which I was facing. I, I was not able to watch a movie in my language. So I made a, uh, an app which allows people to watch a movie in their preferred language at a theater where the movie is playing in a different language. Which is your language? Mine is Hindi. Hindi. Oh, okay. So you were not able to watch it in Hindi. I was in France where all the all the theatres were showing Mission Impossible in French. I couldn't watch it in English or ah, Hindi. Okay. Yeah. I, I personally prefer subtitles to dubbing. Yeah, uh, uh, but that said, I think uh, if a film has that kind of reach, let's like keeping this discussion to Indian uh, theatrical release, I think if a film has that kind of reach, then of course dubbing will help. But I'm personally uh, more in favour of subtitles than dubbing. Did you watch KGF in Kannada or uh, Hindi? Hindi. Even Kantara? Huh? Even Kantara in Hindi? Original. Kantara in Hindi, yes. Oh, I watched wow. it in the original yeah. language. Yeah. Even I prefer subtitles to, uh, to, uh, to dubbing, but people don't, uh, everybody is not for it. So it's better to have, like, I mean, but OTT gives you that uh, freedom, right? Because Darling's was, I think, dubbed in like 80 or 85 languages. I mean, I did the English subtitles myself, so I know. Like I, because I wanted them to just translate right, but they were they dubbed it, and that's great for a film with OTT. I think those things are really falling in place well. Uh, I believe like uh, bigger films work better with dubbing, while the smaller, more art house films work better with subtitles. That's my having said these. I wanted to ask you because uh, you are a generation, basically four of you from different uh, geographical areas, but you are the first generation, say massively exposed to Western uh, uh, filmmaking, we might say, I mean, as a mass uh, culture. But, uh, how does it affect, how does it affect your uh, craft? And uh, where do you find the balance to preserve also your originality as Indian authors? Like, we are not the first generation exposed to Western filmmaking in India. Like, we have been exposed to it long back. Yeah. Now, actually, we are trying to find the, our own language. 
like we are trying to like get away from the western influence in fact i i believe lovely. Lovely. yeah no i meant massively in the sense because it's everywhere OTD and since, since the 90s i believe I mean, if you take if you take the argument of West apart, but the mm -hmm. fact that we've never in the history of screen have we had access to content from across the world at the same time, and in that sense, you would be one of the early generations to do that. It was very common for children growing up now. Yeah, uh, has yeah. that had a massive influence in in the kind of storytelling? I think uh, you yeah you work on your craft forever. I think it's a learning process even after 25 films is what I understand. So I've just made one film and I think I will keep growing and finding my voice and stay true to it. But I think the audience is growing a lot because of OTT and what I discovered like with Darlings is that, you know, because dark comedy is a very tricky genre for India, but because they had watched so much content, they will, I think they were able to accept it more. That's what I feel. I think one of the drawbacks of this, like seeing like uh, the content from all over the world, it's good. But thing is, people in India are not watching what films we have made earlier. So, some, some, uh, say a relatively new concept comes uh, out and we think that we are making it the first time. But if we go back to the kind of films we have done in the past, it was a whole chuka hai. But right, right. Because the generation doesn't even God, yeah. know. Which is the cinema education we were talking about, to actually yeah. have access to stuff that's happened over years yeah. and not think this is the world's greatest idea. Exactly. Nikhil, you want to say something? Yeah, I just said that I have... Uh, I am very influenced by a lot of filmmakers from all across the world and uh, I think what I take positively from this is that access to all this kind of cinema actually also is giving us, comes with it is access to all these filmmakers like for example for my first film I kept listening to the old boy soundtrack, the South Korean old boy mm. and um, when I started making the film I was, yeah. I felt like I have to get this composer for my film. Mm. And I got her. Oh, wow. And I literally had no money. I kept sending her emails and one fine day she replied saying, could you send me the script? And I sent the script. She liked it and she did it for free. She's now a friend of mine. Um, but I said, I feel that uh, technology is, and the technology and the access to all this content, I don't think any filmmaker would like to go away from it or to go, I think it's all, it's all very um, synchronic, if that's a word, in, in a sense that it, it, it only helps. I think it's only a plus.